Okay, so if you notice, I have already put in, I'm going to kind of refresh your memory about what we did right before break, and then we're going to fill this in, and we're going to talk about how we use this again, just to refresh your memory on some things. So remember, unit circle, we refer to this as a unit circle because we are going out one unit for our radius for all of these triangles, right? So that means coordinate along here at zero degrees and 360 degrees, that particular place, that coordinate would be one zero. You can think of it as zero pi or two pi, zero degrees, 360 degrees, any of those, right? Um, <laughs> All right, so that's off to the right, our positive um, quadrantal angle. And then up, up on top here, we know we're going up a distance of 1, so we think about the fact that the coordinate would be 0, 1. We're at 90 degrees. And pi, we know, is 180 degrees. So if we take half of pi, that gets us to the 90 degrees, right? which is what we are looking for there is that 90 degrees. Um, so those are our quadrantal angles. So we're gonna kind of focus our attention more on those middle three angles. And I just wanna refresh your memory about how we come up with those coordinates. So once again, we're gonna look at each of these triangles. So our triangle X, remember, has our that would be our 30 degree angle. So remember you took, I think it was, I don't remember what color it was, probably pink maybe, I don't remember. But we took our triangle and we labeled our sides. Remember we said we know a 30, 60, 90 is, the ratio is one square root of three, two. But we want our, ra our radius or our hypotenuse to be equal to one. So we had to divide each of these values by two in order to get our radius of one. So our radius is one along this side, which is our x coordinate, is our square root of 3 over 2. Along here is our y coordinate, that would be our 1 half. So that corresponds then to this point here at 30 degrees, and the coordinate is square root of 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. Let's think about our radian measure also. So pi is equivalent to 180 degrees. 180 divided by what gets us to 30? 180 divided by some amount is equal to 30. Six. So that tells us then that 30 degrees is equivalent to pi over six. That's the radian measure, right? Okay. All right. So far, so good? Okay, remember our second triangle we looked at was the 45, 45, 90, and we had that one, one square root of two, but we had to divide all of those by the square root of two in order to get our radius of one. And so we got these two sides here, which you don't have to write that, but I would suggest you draw in the lengths of these sides here to help you remember how we get this point up here. So at this 45 degrees, we know the coordinates are square root of 2 over 2, comma, square root of 2 over 2. And then 180 divided by 4 gets us 45 degrees. So that tells us that pi over 4 is our um, 45 degree angle, right? And then lastly, it's our 30, 60, 90 again, but we got to make sure we've got the sides correct. And so this side, remember, is the shorter side now because it's opposite the, this smaller angle. This is the bigger angle, so it needs the bigger number there. So that corresponds then to up here being at 60 degrees and our coordinates would be at one half comma square root of three over two and if we take 180 that's pi we divide by what to get to 60 
3. So that's telling us that pi over 3 is equivalent. That's the radian measure for 60 degrees. All right, questions or comments about that before we actually look at how we're going to use this info? Okay, so some reminders for you then. Um, we know that for the sine ratio, we look at the ratio of y over r, but r in this case, our unit circle is, r is just equal to one. So what that helps us realize is that in order to find a sine value, we just have to look at the y coordinate. Similarly, the cosine ratio we know is x over r, but if r is equal to one, then we know it's just the x coordinate. So on our unit circle, we want to look at the cosine value to find our x, or it corresponds to the x, and when we are looking for a sine value, it corresponds to the y value. And we're gonna talk about tangent here shortly because there's a little bit of a trick on that one. But for now, we'll just look at some sines and cosines. Okay, so as an example, if I ask you to state what the cosine of 30 degrees is, you're not going to the calculator. Someone last hour was like, well, you just plug it into your calculator. No, that's gonna give us an approximate answer we want the exact answer. So cosine of 30 degrees means you're going to 30 degrees. You're looking at the X or the Y for cosine? X. X. And so, Rob, what's the cosine of 30 degrees? Uh, root 3 over 2. Root 3 over 2. There you go. All right, what about the sine of 90 degrees, Taylor? Yep. One. There you go. Sine of 90 degrees is e equal to 1. Excuse me. All right. Cosine of pi over 4. So you might see degrees or radians, so you need to be familiar with both. So, Lily, the cosine of pi over 4 is equal to what? There you go, square root of two over two. You got it. And then um, the sine of zero degrees, Alex? Um, zero. zero. Zero, sounds good. And the cosine of 60 degrees, um, Carson? I'm sorry? One. One half, there you go. Okay. So you've got kind of the idea of how we do our sines and cosines now. Let's talk tangents for a minute. We're gonna start with the easier one. Let's think tangent of 45 degrees or pi over four. For tangent, we know we do y over x, right? Tangent, the ratio is sine over cosine or y over x. So if you think about it, we're doing square root of two over two divided by the square root of two over two. Guys, what's that equal to? One, yes. Okay, so that one's pretty straightforward and easy. Let's talk, there's a little bit of a trick for the other tangent ones that I wanna show you. So let's look at the tangent of pi over three and then we're gonna look at the tangent of pi over six. And then we also need to talk about some reciprocal trig functions here also. Okay, here's the deal. I'm gonna scoot over just to show you this. I just want you to watch. Don't write this down until you've taken a look. So you're gonna have to look at your unit circle because I'm moving the mine away here. The tangent of pi over three. So that means we're doing y. So what's the y value at pi over three? Peyton? Yep, square root of three over two, divided by the <coughs> x, which is what, Catherine? One half. Okay, so that looks pretty messy, not very pretty at all, but we've, so we've gotta do keep it, change it, flip it. I want you to realize what happens when we do that. When we do keep it, change it, flip it, what happens with the twos? They divide out and all we are left with 
to have to worry about is just the numerator of the y over the numerator of the x. So that's kind of the trick, is to remember for the tangent values for these middle, the 30, 45, and 60 degree angle, the tangent value, we just have to worry about the numerator of the y over the numerator of the x. And that's to find a tangent value. Okay, so the tangent of pi over three, we got that that was equal to the square root of three. Let's look at the tangent of pi over six and let's do the trick because there's a little bit, this one's a little bit more involved also. So tangent of pi over six, so numerator of the y, Imani? Just the numerator, though. Uh, um, the numerator. It's at the top or the bottom? Uh, top. Top. Okay, so just the one then, right? So okay. numerator of the y over, what's the numerator of the x, Imani? <coughs> Careful. Numerator of the x. Okay, but just the numerator, so just the square root of 3, right? Because think about what I was just showing you here. The 2s are going to divide out, so we don't have to worry about the 2s. So 1 over the square root of 3, but we have to rationalize that, so we're going to get square root of 3 over 3. So that's, the, that's in my opinion, kind of the, the messiest, quote-unquote, answer that you're going to see because you have to remember to rationalize that. Um, we're going to have some rationalizing when we do some other, um, when we do reciprocals also, but for the basic sine, cosine, and tangent, that's kind of the messiest one there. So here's what I need you to think about. I'm going to kind of talk with you and help you think about how you can extend all of these values into the other quadrants. You're going to focus your attention on memorizing quadrant one, right? Um, because then... If you think about it, any 45 degree angle, if I ask you for the tangent of any 45 degree angle, you know the answer is going to either be positive one or negative one, depending on the quadrant that you're in. Okay? If we're looking for the cosine of 60 degrees, the answer is going to be a half, like you just found in quadrant one. But then if it's a, if it's a reference angle and it's a 60 degree angle in one of the other quadrants, <laughs> Then you just have to decide, should the value be positive or negative based on which quadrant you're in? Okay, similar type of thing. If we're doing cosine of pi over four, it's gonna be the square root of two over two. Any cosine of any something pi over four, it could be three pi over four, five pi over four, seven pi over four, 37 pi over four. You know the answer is gonna be root two over two. You got that from quadrant one. You just have to figure out which quadrant this other angle would be in and decide on whether it's positive or <coughs> negative. So that's the beauty of just focusing your attention on quadrant one and then you can kind of extend your thinking for positive and negative signs and stuff and that's what we're going to look at here in just a second. Okay? All right, questions or comments so far? All right, let's look at some reciprocals. So the cosecant of 60 degrees. So the cosecant is the reciprocal of what trig function? Sine. Uh, Sine. There you go. So that means are we going to look at the x or the y? y? Y. So go to the 60 degrees, find the y, and flip it. So it tells us, yes, exactly, Jackson. 2 over square root of 3. Now we got to rationalize that so we get... 2 root 3 over 3. What about the secant of 45 degrees? Piper, secant is the reciprocal of which trig function? Cream and sugar. So secant and...
we have we have s we have this we have the sugar so we need the cream so is secant the reciprocal of sine or cosine cosine because we need the cream so secant is the reciprocal of cosine so that means we're going to look at the x coordinate at 45 degrees but we're going to flip it because we're doing the secant so what do we get there piper Okay, yes, we get, because we have to rationalize it, so we get 2 root 2 over 2, but that simplifies a little bit more, doesn't it? The 2's divide out, and so you just get root 2. Awesome. All right, let's do a cotangent, and then I have a couple quadrantal angles we should look at also. So cotangent of 60 degrees. So we know tangent, we did numerator of the y over numerator of the x. So for cotangent, we're going to do numerator of the x over numerator of the y. So Aiden, what do we get there? For cotangent uh, of 60 degrees. 1 over square root 3. Good. And then we have to rationalize that, so we get root 3 over 3. Beautiful. All right, let's look at some of these quadrantal angles. If I ask you about the cosecant of zero degrees. So cosecant, the reciprocal function, is the reciprocal function for what trig function, Ariana? Sine. Sine. So we want to look at the y, and we need to flip it. If we have zero, think of that as zero over one. If we flip that, what are we going to get? Undefined. Undefined. There you go. Good. Nice. Um, the secant of zero degrees. Catherine. You got to you watch what the trig function is. So all of these over here that I am writing. Do you notice those are all reciprocal? They're not the basic sine, cosine, and tangent. They are the reciprocal functions, the secant, the cosecant, and the cotangent. So when you see the, those reciprocal functions, you know you're flipping. Good question. Glad that's a good reminder, too. So, okay, Jack, secant of zero degrees. So secant's the reciprocal of which trig function? Okay, so we're going to look at the x or the y. Okay, and we're flipping it, so what do we get? Zero. Mm, careful. What's, what's the x? One. One. So think of it as one over one. Yeah. If we flip that, you're right. There you go. You realize we just get one, don't we? Um, okay, and then one last one. Tangent, uh, Zoe, tangent of zero degrees. What are we going to get there? Zoe? <laughs> tangent of zero degrees. Um, so tangent we know is y over x. <laughs> uh, Just keep nudging her, Catherine. Tangent. I'm sorry? Okay. No, we're not. We want tangent at zero degrees. I'm, I'm throwing you a curveball here because these are not, that's not a reciprocal. So tangent we know is y over x. So what do we get for the value? What's the y value at zero degrees? Zero over okay, so zero over one, which is zero. Thank you for helping me. <laughs> All right, questions, comments, thoughts? You're gonna extend this from quadrant one, you're gonna do some practice with quadrant one, and then it's gonna get extended into the other quadrants, as well as um, reciprocals. Okay, all right, a few other things I want to share with you. We're not going to fill in every little thing here. Some of this is going to kind of just be good practice for you, but I want to kind of show you some patterns now with the radian measures because a lot of people have a hard time getting the radians memorized. So I want to show you some tricks about the, the, or some patterns with the radian measures here. So these are the, almost all of the radian measures. So these are our quadrantal angles, the radian measures for our quadrantal angles, right? Okay, 
So we know pi is 180 degrees, so hopefully that should make sense to you then. A half pi, we know this is our 180. I'm sorry, 90, excuse me, half of 180, right? So that gives us our 90. And what do we have to multiply 90 by in order to get to 270? 90 times what gives us 270? Three. three. So that's how we know that three pi over two has to be our 270. Okay. All right, I'm gonna show you a few different relationships here. I want you to focus your attention on the second one that I'm gonna do here, so don't do any drawing or highlighting yet. I want you to notice that all of those are something pi over six. So what's the reference angle? 30. Some 180 divided by six, we know those are our 30 degree reference angles, right? These pi over fours, don't, don't, if you wanna write the 30 and the whatever we get over here, that's fine, but don't draw lines going across yet. I want you focusing on going down here in just a second. Something pi over four, if it's anything pi over four, what's 45. the reference angle? 45. There you go, 45. Good. And then lastly, 180 divided by three? 60. 60. So anytime, anytime you see, guys, it could be 5 billion pi over three you know it's a 60 degree reference angle. If it's anything pi over three, you know it's a 60 degree reference angle, right? That's what I'm trying to get at there with that. Keep that in mind. Okay, that's going across, looking at those, but now I want you to focus your attention as well on the columns. So that's what we're gonna focus on now. So take a look. Okay. We know that's our quadrant one reference angles, right? Our 30 degree, our 45 degree, our 60 degree. Let's look at these other, I, I want you to notice some patterns with the numbers. Okay. Pl focus your attention just on those fractions for a minute. What do you notice? the numbers in the numerator compared to the numbers in the denominator for all of the all three of those values what do you notice okay evens and odds I, I, that is a good thought too i like that but there's something more look at it's consistent throughout them Compare the number in the numerator compared to the number in the denominator. That's one, okay, so the numerator is one less than, less than thank you, Jackson, good. The numerator is one less than the number in the denominator. And that's what's gonna be the case for any particular radian measure in quadrant two. Okay, I want you to think about why that is. If we're rotating all the way around to here, we're at pi or something equivalent to pi. So think about that. That would be six pi over six, four pi over four, three pi over three. But if we're an angle that's in quadrant two, that's up here, then obviously it can't quite be that far. It can't have rotated all the way around to one pi it has to be a little bit less than that. So if you see that you, ha you see a radian measure that it, with a fraction where the numerator is one less than the denominator, you know you're in quadrant two. Okay, similarly, what do you notice with the numerators and the denominators here? Whoop. Let's make this blue. This is quadrant three. What do you notice about those? How does the, the numerator, numerator compare? One than yes, there you go, Jackson. The numerator is one larger, one more than. So think about what's happening there. It means we're rotating to pi and then we're going a little bit farther down into this next quadrant. So those fractions 
are going to have to be a little bit bigger than 1 pi. Right? Okay, and then one more color. What color should I use here? Purple. Let's go purple. This one's a little bit trickier. This is quadrant four, but I want you to think about where quadrant four is. If we rotate all the way around, we're at two pi. So let's think about the fact that that would be it. That's equivalent to 12 pi over six or eight pi over four or six pi over three. What do you notice about the numerators in all of these examples over here in this in quadrant four compared to the denominator? Look at these values here and look at these here. If we're in quadrant four, what's happening? Okay, it's one less than what our two pi would be, right? So if you take your denominator and you double it and subtract one, right? Six times two is 12 minus one, we get the 11. Four times two is eight minus one, we get the seven. Three times two is six minus one, we get that five. So it's just less than what our two pi would be equal to. And that should make sense because we're not, we're, we're in quadrant four, we haven't quite rotated all the way around to two pi, okay? So here's how that's helpful. Even if you don't remember what the degree measure is, if you don't know what 5 pi over 4 is, you're going to need to start memorizing that. But 5 pi over 4, we know it has to be a 45 degree reference angle, and we know it has to be in quadrant 3. So that's giving you a really good start to figure out what that angle has to be, right? If, I, if we have 19 pi, over 10, you should be able to look at that and tell me which quadrant it's in. What quadrant is that, would that be in? Uh-oh, someone help me out here. 19 pi over 10, what quadrant would that be in, guys? Faith, what do you think? Four? Yeah, quadrant four. Don't sound so skeptical, you're right. Look at that denominator and it's one less than double what your denominator was, right? What if we had seven pi over eight? Rob, what quadrant would that be in? Uh, two. Two, you got it. Whoops, I'm drawing too many lines here. Okay, so hopefully you see how that is helpful. Um, you may or may not want to kind of use that up on top to kind of help you with practicing or doing your memorizing. Where? Um, this is if you don't have your paper plate to do your homework tonight, you're going to need this. And if you have a paper plate and you still have to fill some stuff in, this is a good place to go as well. Okay. I want to focus our attention down here at the bottom. I'm going to teach you a little bit of a mnemonic device that's used to help you decide on the signs, in other words, the positive and negative signs for your different quadrants. So the mnemonic is, that is used is all students take calculus. If you want to make your own, that's fine. Some of you guys I know like to come up with different mnemonics, but I want you to see what this is really trying to help us see what it's telling us. So the A is for quadrant one, S goes in quadrant two, T is quadrant three, the C is quadrant four. So it helps us realize ASTC there. It helps us label that. And what it's telling us is what trig functions are positive in that particular quadrant. So if you notice, everything's positive here, which that should make sense to you because you know in quadrant one, the x values are positive and the y values are positive, right? Over here in quadrant two, the x is negative and the y is positive. So think about that. Hopefully it makes sense to you then. The sine value is positive. It's above the x-axis, but the x and the, the tangent value that involve an x, that's gonna have to be negative. 
So the sine values are positive in quadrant two. Okay, they're also positive in quadrant one, obviously. Everything's positive in quadrant one. In quadrant three, if you notice, the tangent value is positive, and that should make sense as well. If you think about it, tangent we know is y over x, so we're doing a negative divided by a negative, so we get a positive. But our cosine and our sine are going to both be negative. And then lastly, over here, we know we're positive for our x, which is our cosine, and negative for our y, which is our sine. So that's why the cosine value is positive, but the other two trig functions are negative. By the way, if sine is positive, then so is cosecant. If tangent is positive, so is cotangent. If cosine is positive, so is secant. So the reciprocal always has the same sign, right? Um, how much time do we have? Okay. So I'm going to give you a quick example of how you might see this. And I think this is in some of your homework for tonight. If I ask you to tell me, uh, if I ask you to tell me, I want you to tell me what quadrant we would have to be in. Think about what this is saying. This is saying that our cosine value is positive. And our sine value is negative. So yeah, that's telling us we've got to be in quadrant four, doesn't it? There you go. If cosine's positive, cosine's positive in, <coughs> cosine's positive here and here. But the sine value being negative, that means it can't be up here. It's going to have to be over here in quadrant four. Okay. All right, I'm trying to think. Oh, the hand trick. All right, I wanna to explain to you how the hand trick works. This is to help you if you don't have unit circle in front of you and you've gotta answer questions about coordinates about the unit circle or answer questions about sine or cosine or change in values. I'm gonna show you how you can use your hand to come up with what those values are. Where is my circle? Go. Oh, up here. So page eight, and then also the delta math. And remember, you guys have to go through delta math. You can't go through Canvas to get to my delta math. Okay. All right. So left hand, palm facing towards you. You want your pinky basically parallel to the ground. So your pinky... Think of that and envision that that's zero degrees, right? And then at that point, hold your thumb straight up so that it's at 90 degrees. So pinky wow. parallel to the floor, that's at zero degrees. Up, thumb is at 90 degrees, right? That means your three middle fingers are your 30, your 45, and your 60 degrees. So ring finger is 30 degrees. Middle finger is 45 degrees, 60 degrees is your pointer, okay? So you have to remember a little bit of this, but it's to help you find those coordinates. So as an example, at 30 degrees, ring finger, fold that finger down. So left hand, other way. Okay, fold that finger down. How many fingers do you have to the left? You have three, and what's the x coordinate? So you have to remember the square root business over two. You have to remember that it's square root of three over two, comma, how many fingers do you have to the right? One. What's the square root of one, guys? One over two. So the coordinates at 30 degrees are square root of three over two, comma, one over two. 45 degrees, similarly. How many fingers do you have to the left? Two. two. So square root of two over two, comma. To the right, you have two also, square root of two over two. And then 60 degrees, similarly. One half, comma, square root of three over two. And that's what you're gonna see there. It even works for zero and 90 degrees. It's zero degrees. 
I can't, I have to hold my finger down. I can't pull that one down and leave it there. How many fingers do I have to the left? Square root of four is two over two is one. Comma, how many do we have to the right? None, zero. So the coordinates at zero degrees is one comma zero. So it works for everything. Like God gave you your own beautiful quadrant one unit circle right here to help you with your coordinates. Okay? Whoops. Nope. Okay, that's going to be part of your homework for tonight. The other part's a delta math. I'll explain about that in just a second.